Hi guys, welcome to another biology video. In this video, we'll be looking at biology paper one for 2020 internal candidates. Question one, all living organisms absorb glucose, release energy in its cells, and then passes out carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Which characteristics of living things are described in the statement above? A. Excretion, nutrition, respiration. B. Excretion, growth, respiration. C. Excretion, growth, nutrition, irritability. D. Nutrition, respiration, irritability. So what's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer for question number one is Z, A. We have more excretion taking place, which of course is passing out of carbon dioxide. Then we have more nutrition, which is the absorption of glucose. Then we have more respiration, which is the release of energy in its cells. So the correct answer is A, A. Question two. Three cell structures are listed below. One, cell wall. Two, cytoplasm. Three, nucleus. Which structures are found in both? Parasite cells and the liver cells. A, one and two. B, one only. C, two and three. D, three only. So what's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, C, two and D, three. So both plants and animal cells will contain three parts, which is the cytoplasm, the nucleus and the cell membrane. So here we're only dealing with two, which is cytoplasm and the nucleus. So those three parts are what are commonly referred to as the protoplasm. Question three. The diagram below shows a piece of viscous tubing containing suspension held in a beaker of pure water. Saliva was added to the starch and the experiment was left for two hours. What does the experiment show? A. Saliva is a solvent for starch. B. Saliva passes through the viscous tube. C. Starch can be changed to sugar. D. Starch is a soluble in pure water. So what's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, C, starch can be changed to sugar. So once the starch has been placed in, has been added with saliva, saliva contains an enzyme which is salivary amylase, which will then change the starch into maltose. So digestion will take place. Now, once we have uh, starch present in the viscous tube, what will basically happen is that uh, uh, sugar will then uh, diffuse from the viscous tube into the water. So that by diffusion taking place. So that's why here we're saying starch can be changed to what? To sugar. So that is the correct answer. Question four. Which of the following is true about the enzymes? A, effective at pH 7, and each enzyme catalyzes one reaction. B, each enzyme catalyzes one reaction. C, they are sugars. D, they are sugars and they effective at pH 7. So what's the correct answer here? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is B. Each enzyme catalyzes one reaction. So enzymes are not sugars. They are actually made of proteins. And not all enzymes are effective at pH 7. That is saliva amylase. So we have enzymes which work in acidic as well as enzymes which work in the alkaline, sorry, in the alkaline environment. So here all enzymes catalyze only one reaction because enzymes are specific. Question five, chemical tests were carried out on a food sample solution. The table below shows the results. Test, burette, result table. 
ethanol, white suspension, iodine, brown fat. What did the food sample contain? A. Fats, protein, starch. B. Fats, protein. C. Fats and starch. D. Protein and D. Starch. What is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, B. The food sample contained the fats because the ethanol had a white immersion, which is a positive test. And the protein is also present because the burette tends to purple. So starch is absent because the iodine remains brown. The positive test for iodine is Z. It tends to blue or black. Okay. We move to the next question. Question 6. The table below shows the mass of some nutrients found in 100 grams of four different foods. So we have our table here, which contains the foods of beans, bread, cheese, and eggs. So for carbohydrates, in beans we have 10, in bread 4.8, cheese, and eggs 0 0.0. For fats, beans we have 0 0.4, bread we have 1.5, cheese we have 0. 34.0, eggs we have 11.0. For protein, beans we have 5.0, bread 9.0, cheese 25.0, eggs 13.0. For vitamin C per milligram, beans we have 3.0 and bread, cheese and eggs for have 0, 0.0. Vitamin D per milligram, beans and the bread we have 0, 0.0. For cheese, we have 0.4 and eggs, we have 1.5. The question says, which foods would best prevent rickets and the scape? So, A, rickets, we have beans and bread. B, we have beans and cheese. C, cheese and eggs. Then E, D, eggs and the beans. So, what is the correct answer here? Is it A, B, C or D? The correct answer here is C, D. For rickets, to prevent rickets, we are going to need the vitamin e, D. So you can see that eggs contain a lot of vitamin D, about 1.5V milligrams. Then for scurvy, to prevent scurvy, we need vitamin C. And the vitamin C is only present in beans, which is about 3.0 milligrams. So the correct answer here is C, D. Rickets, we need eggs, and scavy, we need the beans. All right, we go to the next question. Question seven, which of the following people needs the most energy daily? A, manual worker, B, pregnant woman, C, 14-year-old teenage boy, D, 80-year-old girl. So who among the four who need the most energy daily? Is it A? B, C, or D? The correct answer here is C, A, the manual worker. Because manual workers do a lot of physical work, so they need a lot of water energy to be able to perform their daily duties. So these are the ones who need to eat a lot of carbohydrates. So that's why when you go where there are people who are building, you might find that they're able to cook a very big pot of Hiroshima at the work site so that they're able to have their daily energy as they're busy doing their construction work. So that is uh, our answer for question number seven. Question eight. Which mineral nutrient is required by plants for proper formation of full roots? A, magnesium, B, nitrogen, C, phosphorus, and D, potassium. So which nutrient is needed for proper root formation? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is C, C, phosphorus. So phosphorus is what we need for proper formation of full roots. So that's the nutrient we need for formation of roots. So magnesium is needed to form nit uh, uh, chlorophyll. Nitrogen we need it for protein synthesis. How to make proteins and potassium is basically used for flowers and this strong stem. So the correct answer here is C, C phosphorus. Okay. Question 9. The diagram below shows an experiment of operators for an e, sorry. 
The diagram below shows an arrangement of apparatus for an experiment on photosynthesis left in sunlight for 5 V hours. The leaf was then tested for starch. So we have sunlight and we have sodium hydrogen carbonate and the leaf is labeled X, Y and Z. After the experiment, what were the colors of the regions X, C, Y and D, Z? So A, we have X, blue blood, Y, blue blood, Z, brown, B, X, blue blood, Y, brown, Z, white, C, X, brown, Y, white, and Z, blue, black, D, X, blue, to black, Y, brown, and D, Z, brown. So, which is the correct answer here? So, we want to look at the parts which will be able to carry out photosynthesis and which ones will not be able to carry out photosynthesis. So, what's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is D. So X will be blue black because it's exposed to sunlight. So mean that photosynthesis will be able to carry out or take place. But uh, Y has been covered by the cock stop. So mean that there we have no sunlight uh, reaching the leaf. So mean that there we have no photosynthesis taking place. So that's why the leaf will remain brown. And Z will also be brown because no photosynthesis will take place because in the flask we have sodium hydrogen carbonate, sorry, sodium hydroxide pellets which are able to absorb carbon dioxide. So since there is no carbon dioxide in the flask, we also will be able to have photosynthesis taking place. So that's why here our correct answer is Z, D. Okay, we go to the next question. Question 10. The dental formula of a certain carnivore is uh, scissors 3 over 3, canines 1 over 1, premolars 1 over 2, molars 2 over 1. What is the total number of teeth in the lower jaw of this carnivore? A. 7 B. 14 C. 28 D. 32 so what's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, B, 14. So here, to find our 14, the first thing we need to do is Z, first you know the formula, which is the total number of teeth will be equals to the teeth on the lower jaw, then we multiply by 2. So here, the lower jaw, we have 3 incisors, 1 knee, uh, canine, two premolars and one e molar. So we uh, add and then e multiply by two. So once we add, we are going to have o seven, which will have o seven times two. Then when we do seven times two, we are going to get what? 14. So that's why here our correct answer is B, 14. Okay. So don't forget, whenever you are dealing with the dental formula and you want to know the total number of teeth, we are always multiplying by e to one. Okay. Question 11. The diagram below shows part of the alimentary canal. Which two structures produce substances involved in the digestion of lipids? A. 1 and 5. B. 2 and 3. C. 3 and 4. D. 4 and D. 5. What's the correct answer here? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is C. C. We have the pancreas as well as the liver. So here, the liver will produce what are known as the bowel salts, which will then be stored in the gallbladder, which is 5. So 5 is just basically storing the bowel salts. It's not actually producing. Then uh, three, the pancreas produces the pancreatic juice, which will contain the enzyme pancreatic lipase, which will break down the fats into glycerin and fatty acids. While the bowel, which is produced by the liver, the bowel salts, will actually be used to emulsify large fat droplets into smaller droplets. So that's why your answer is three and D four. Okay, so that is the answer. All right. Question number 12. The diagram shows the structure of a gill. 
what are the functions of the parts labeled x and the y? A, x for attachment, y for gaseous exchange, B for gaseous exchange, Y for removal of solid particles, C, X removal of solid particles, Y for attachment, D, X for removal of solid particles, Y for gaseous exchange. So what is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A, B. So X is a, the U filament and its the function is to carry out gaseous C exchange. Then Y, we have the U rakers and the function of the U raker is to remove V solid D particles. So that's why your correct answer here is Z, X. Okay, we move to the next question. Question 13. Which substances are produced in uh, muscles by aerobic and anaerobic respiration? A. Aerobic respiration, carbon dioxide and water. Anaerobic respiration, ethanol. B. Carbon dioxide and D, water. Anaerobic respiration, lactic acid. C. Aerobic respiration, lactic acid. Anaerobic respiration, ethanol. D. Aerobic respiration, lactic acid. Anaerobic respiration, carbon dioxide and D, water. So, what is the answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A, B. So when we have uh, aerobic respiration, glucose reacts with the glucose to produce C, carbon dioxide and water and the energy. While in the anaerobic respiration in the muscles, we are going to have uh, glucose being broken down into lactic acid and the energy. So ethanol is produced in plants. So here, since we're talking about muscles, we're talking about animals. So animals will produce lactic acid, which can cause fainting or muscle clumps. That's so why we say that when people are running, some runners might end up fainting, but others might have a muscle clump, or they only call as a muscle pool. So that's why your correct answer is B. We move to the next question. Question 14. Below is a list of signs and symptoms of a disease. One, severe diarrhea. Two, dehydration. Three, abdominal pains. Four, nausea. Five, vomiting. Which disease is characterized by the above signs and the symptoms? A, Buhasia. B, Chlorella. C, Marelia. D, tuberculosis. So what is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A, B, Corella. So Corella will actually lead to severe rice water diarrhea. And of course, the rice water diarrhea and vomiting will end up leading to dehydration as well as the abdominal pains. And the nausea, of course, will be the one inducing what is vomiting. So that is the correct answer. Question 15. The diagram shows a cross section through a root of a plant, which tissue transports water and mineral salts to different parts of the plant. Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A, B, which is A, the xylem vessel. So what you have to remember is that uh, when you talk about the dicot root, the xylem will be at the center of the root and it will be in a star shaped. So the part which transports water and mineral salts is the xylem vessel, which is star shaped in the dicot roots. So that's why the correct answer is Z. Question 16. The diagram below shows the three types of blood cells, P, Q, and R. Which of these uh, cells produce uh, antibodies, engulf bacteria, and are involved in uh, blood clotting? A. Engulfs bacteria. P. Involved in blood clotting. Q. Produces antibodies. R. B. Engulfs bacteria. P. Involved in blood clotting. R. Produces antibodies. Q. C. Engulfs bacteria. Q. 
involved in blood clotting P produces antibodies R, D in Gauss bacteria Q involved in blood clotting R produces antibodies P. So which one is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A, B. So the cell which engulfs bacteria is P, which is the phagocyte, which we can easily identify by it having a lobe D nucleus and large cytoplasm. Then the, the part which is involved in blood clotting are the platelets, which are R, and the, the cell which produces antibodies is Q, which is the lymphocyte, which you can easily tell by it having a large nucleus and being in cytoplasm. So the correct answer here is B. Question 17. The diagram shows a longitudinal section through a mammalian heart, which labeled blood vessel carry deoxygenated blood. A. 1 and 2, B, 1 and 3, C, 2 and 4, D, 3 and D, 4. What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C or D? The correct answer here is D, 3, which is the vena cava, and D, 4, which is the pulmonary artery. So the vena cava and pulmonary arteries are the ones which will carry the oxygenated blood. So that's why I find that the right side of the heart carries the oxygenated blood, while the left side of the heart will carry oxygenated blood. Question 18. The diagram shows part of the excretory system of a mammal. What are the number D structures? A. One bladder. 2 ureter, 3 kidney, 4 ureter, B, 1 bladder, 2 ureter, 3 kidney, 4 ureter, C, 1 kidney, 2 ureter, 3 bladder, 4 ureter, D, 1 kidney, 2 ureter, 3 bladder, 4 ureter. What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is e, C. So one, we have the kidney, and the two, we have the ureter, and the three, we have the urinary bladder, and four, you have the ureter. So that is the correct answer. Question 19. Where is the hormone insulin produced? And what is its site of action? A. Site of production, adrenal glands. Site of action, liver. B. Site of production, adrenal glands. Site of action, muscle, body muscles. C. Site of production, pancreas. Site of action, liver. D. Site of production, pancreas. Site of action, ileum. What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is e, C. So insulin is actually produced in the pancreas and it will be used by the liver to convert the excess glucose into glycogen. So that is the correct answer. We move on to the next question. Question 20. A conditioned reflex differs from a spinal reflex because the conditioned reflex A does not involve limbs, B does not involve the brain, C has been modified by past experience, D is faster. So what's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is C. So a conditioned reflex has been modified by past experience because a conditioned reflex is learned or it is achieved through RT training. So that is how we differ from a spinal as well as a conditioned RT reflex. So right now we've reached question 20, which is the midpoint of the paper. We have 20 more questions to go. 
If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you give the video a like and leave a comment here in the comment section. And don't also forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any new videos which I upload. Okay, then we continue with the video. We go to question number 21. The diagram below shows a section of the human brain. Which of the labeled parts is responsible for memory? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, B, which is the cerebrium. So the cerebrium, this is where we have more memory as well as the intelligence. So A is the pituitary gland, which is, of course, the master gland which produces hormones. D is the medulla oblongata, in charge of involuntary actions like salivating as well as the breathing. Then C is the cerebrum, which is in charge of body posture as well as the balance. So our correct answer here is the B. 22. Which part of the ear transmits vibrations from the outer ear to the inner ear? A. Cochlea. B. The station tube. C. Ossicles. D. Pina. What is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is this C, the ossicles. So it's the ossicles or which will actually form a sound bridge which will carry the information from the eardrum to the oval window. So that will actually act as a transmission between the outer ear and the inner ear. So our correct answer is this C. 23. The diagram below shows the muscles and bones of the upper arm. Which of the following correctly identifies bones P and Q and muscle R? A. P. Humerus. R. Q. Sorry. Radius. R. Biceps. B. P. Radius. Q. Humerus. R. Triceps. C. P, radius, Q, auna, ara, triceps, D, P, auna, Q, humerus, ara, triceps. What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is e, A. So the bone P is e, the humerus, and the, the bone Q is e, the radius, Wow, muscle are uh, the biceps. So that is a correct answer. Question 24. An experiment was carried out to investigate growth response in male seedlings, as shown in the diagram below. What type of response was being investigated above? A. Negative geotropism. B. Negative Autotropism, C, positive geotropism, D, positive phototropism. So what is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, D, positive phototropism, because we can see that the shoot here is growing towards the direction of sunlight. So since the shoot is growing upwards where sunlight is, it's still growing towards gravity, so still growing towards light, so it's positive phototropism. Very good. So we move on to the next question. Question 25. The diagram below shows differentiated cells. Which of the cells A, B, C, and T above are parenchyma cells? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is this, C, because what you have to remember is that parenchyma cells will contain thin walls. So you can see that from a diagram here, the cells which contain thin cell walls is this, C, while the cells A, B, and C have, I mean, A, B, and D have thick walls. So while A actually have an even the thick walls, so that one is actually a parenchyma tissue. So our correct answer here is C, which is cause the cortex. We move to the next question. 
Question 26. The diagram shows two germinating seeds. What type of germination is illustrated in P and D Q? A. P epigel, Q epigel. B. P epigel, Q hypogel. C. P hypogel, Q epigel. D. D. Sorry, D. P hypogel and Q hypogel. What is the correct answer here? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, B. So P is Z, hypogeal germination. As you can see here, we have full elongation of the hypocotyl, which is causing the cotyledons to be pushed above the ground. Then the Q is hypogeal germination, because you can see here, the cotyledons are remaining below the ground while the Epicotyl is elongating and pushing itself out of the ground. So here the correct answer here is B. We have epigel and hypogel germination. Question 27. Which of the following essential methods of reproduction is used in propagating sweet potatoes? A. Rhizomes. B. Roots tubers. C. Stem tubers. D. Suckers. What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A, B, root tubers. So sweet potatoes are actually modified the roots, so those will end up forming the root T tubers. So for stem tuber, that one is for the Irish potato. Those are the ones which are made of stem tubers, but for the root tubers, we have sweet potatoes as well as cassava. So that's why your correct answer is C, B. Question 28. After a plant was has produced flowers, which of the following is the correct sequence of the events that follow? A. Fertilization to pollination to seed formation. B. Pollination to fertilization to seed formation. C. Seed formation to fertilization to pollination. D. Seed formation to pollination to fertilization. So what is the correct sequence here? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, B. So once the flower has been made, pollination has to take place where the pollen will be transferred from the anther to the stigma. Then the pollen tube will germinate and then pollen fertilization will take place in the ovule, which will have a double fertilization. Then after fertilization is done, the ovule will form the seeds while the ovary becomes the fruit. So the correct answer here is Z, B. We move to the next question. Question 29. Which of the following is an important reason for seed dispersal? A. It causes the development of a fruit. B. It makes the seeds more fertile. C. It prevents asexual reproduction. D. It reduces competition between seedlings. So what is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C? Or D. The correct answer here is Z, D. It reduces the competition between the seedlings. So that's why seeds need to disperse their seeds so that the seeds do not grow near the parent because they will be competing for the same nutrients as the offspring. So that's why seed dispersal is an advantage to plants because it will end up reducing competition because the seeds will be further away from the parent. Another advantage is that it will allow plants to colonize new areas then it also prevents extinction of all plants in one area in case there are any uh, natural disasters. So that's why here correct answer is D, reducing competition. Question 30. Which of the following causes of infertility results from having multiple sexual partners? A. Blocked oviduct. D. Fibroids, C, ovular ovulation disorders, D, sexually transmitted infections. 
What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is it D. So here, infertility can occur due to having a sexually transmitted infection such as the gonorrhea and this syphilis can actually lead to infertility. So that can be caused by having multiple sexual partners, especially when someone is having unprotected sexual intercourse with these multiple sexual partners. So that can lead to STIs, which will end up now blocking the oviducts or blocking the sperm ducts. So that can lead to infertility. So the correct answer here is Z, D. Question 31. The diagram below shows a developing fetus in the uterus. Where does the fit of blood become oxygenated? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, D. So blood will end up getting oxygenated at the placenta because this is where we're going to have exchange of material. So the fetus will be able to receive nutrients from the mother as well as oxygen. Then the fetus will also be able to get rid of carbon dioxide and the other metabolic waste. So we have the placenta working as a medium for exchange of material. So that is why the correct answer here is D, the placenta. Question 32. Which of the following birth control methods can affect the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone FSH in the pituitary gland? A. Intrauterine device. B. Oral contraceptive pill. C. Breathing method. D. Tubular ligation. So, what is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A, B, oral contraceptive pills, because these pills will contain artificial progesterone which will actually work as a negative feedback. So this will actually prevent the secretion of follicle-stimulating hormone. So that is how contraceptive POZ work. So the correct answer here is B. Question 33. What are the following results from meiosis? A, sexual reproduction. B, Growth of stems and roots, C. Production of gametes, D. Repair of tissues or cells. What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is C. C. Production of gametes. So meiosis leads to production of four haploid cells which normally will end up becoming diploid when fertilization takes what it place. So that is why we have homeosis. So homeosis is the division which leads to the production of gametes, which of course are sexy cells. Question 34. The genotype of a human albino is recessive. Two normal parents have an albino child. What is the percentage of their next child also being an e or B? A, 25%, B, 50%, C, 75%, D, 100%. What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A, 25%. So, since we've known that uh, the parents are normal, meaning that they're all going to have a dominant gene for normal gene and the other will have uh, a recessive gene, so they're going to be heterozygous. So, we have uh, the normal parents will be crossed with normal. So, since they are normal, they are going to be heterozygous. So, we're going to have uh, capital letter with a small letter. Then we split uh, the gametes, so we cross the uh, first uh, gamete with the other one. Then we cross the, uh, this one with the next one. We cross this one with uh, the air as well. Then we cross this one with the, the recessive one as well. So we're going to get it. heterozygous, or I mean homozygous, heterozygous, heterozygous, and homozygous. So you can see that here we're going to have four, three normal. So we're going to have normal, 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 and the albino. So since we have four, 
one albino that will give us a one out of four chance. So one out of four times the hundred will now give us what? 25%. So that's why our answer here is 25%. Okay, so don't always forget whenever you cross heterozygous with heterozygous, the ratio we get is 3 to 1. Okay, so that will be 3 over 4 and 1 over 4. Question 35. The diagram shows organisms which belong to the phylum Arthropoda. Which classes do these organisms belong to? A. X. Arachnida. Y. Crustacea. Z. Insecta. B. X. Arachnida. Z. Crustacea. Y. Insecta. C. Y. Arachnida. X. Crustacea. Z. Insecta. D. Y. Arachnida. Z. Crustacea. X. Insecta. So, what is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, D. So Arachnida will be Y, which is uh, spiders. So these will have uh, eight legs. So they have four pairs of legs. Then for Crustacea, it would be Z. And these have uh, five pairs of uh, legs, which of course is the crab. Then X is Insecta which have got three pairs of legs or six legs. So that's why here our correct answer is Z, D. Question 36. Which of the following correctly identifies the causes of loss of soil fertility? A. Deforestation, lead burning, leaching, weeding. B. Deforestation, lead burning, leaching. C. Leaching, weeding. D. Deforestation, leaching. So which is the correct answer here? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is Z, B. So deforestation will be caused, uh, loss of soil fertility will be caused by deforestation. So when trees are cut, uh, trees are there to hold the soil. So it means that when it rains, the top soil will actually be washed out, which will leave the soil fatal. Lead burning will cause intense fires, which will end up killing microorganisms in the soil, which are needed for um, improving soil fertility. Then uh, leaching will lead to washing away or draining of all nutrients. So weeding cannot cause the soil loss of soil fertility because you are removing the weeds which are competing with your plants. So here the correct answer is B. Question 37. The diagram below shows a food chain. Grass is eaten by grasshopper. Grasshopper is eaten by blue teeth. Blue teeth is eaten by a cobra. At which points the both P, Q, and R is energy lost? A, P only. B, P and Q only. C, Q and R only. D, P, Q, and D, R. So what is the correct answer here? Is it A, B, C, or D? And the correct answer here is it D. We are going to have loss of energy as the energy moves from one profit level to the other. So as energy moves from one profit level to another, we are always losing energy. And we always lose about 90% of the energy through expression respiration and the ejection. So only 10% of energy is passed on to the next trophic level. So we're going to lose energy at P, also lose energy at Q, and also at T, R. So the correct answer here is D. Question 38. Which of the following factors increases the size of a population? A. Which fire? B. Emigration, C, over harvesting, D, urbanization. Which is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? 
The correct answer here is a D. Urbanization. So urbanization will lead to an increase in human population because uh, you are going to have uh, organisms moving in to the urban area where they are going to actually be more. So bushfires will cause the uh, death of animals because there we find that it will end up uh, uh, killing the plant life. Then apart from that, we have emigration where organisms actually exit the population and leave the population so the population will reduce. Then we have over harvesting, which of course uh, will lead to loss of food, uh, uh, food uh, in the ecosystem. So that will lead to a loss in the uh, population. So here our correct answer is it. Okay. Next question. Question 39. The diagram shows part of the carbon cycle. Which of the following retains most water to the atmosphere? A. Evaporation from the sea and lakes. B. Respiration from animals. C. Respiration from plants. D. Transpiration. What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is A. We are going to have more water lost from the sea as well as the lakes. Because as the vibration takes place, we end up losing more water. So that is the correct answer. We move on to the last question. Question 40. Which of the following can lead to global warming? A. Deforestation and burning of fossil fuels. B. Deforestation only. C. Depending of fossil fuels only, D, none of the above. So what is the correct answer here? Is it A, B, C, D? The correct answer here is A, we're going to have deforestation will cause global warming because once the plants have been cut down, they won't be able to absorb more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So the intake of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere will reduce, so you have more carbon in the atmosphere, leading to the greenhouse effect, and also burning of fossil fuels add more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, which in further leads to global warming. So that was the correct answer. So this was our last question. So hope you had enjoyed the, the video. Uh, make sure you leave a like for the video if you enjoyed it and also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed and also uh, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos which i upload uh, looking forward to hearing from you in the comment section and uh, once again thank you so much for watching i'll see you again in the next video bye for now